What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to The Sully Show. We have this right here today, some good old Buffalo Trace. All right, some Buffalo Trace uh, kind of blew up in the past couple of years. You know, I'm, as you know, I'm pretty new to the whiskey experience, but from what I've heard when I've been reading, Buffalo Trace has really blown up, especially since Joe Rogan said that he drunk it. Like after that, prices became higher became harder to find, just everybody wanted it, okay, and it's just been getting increasingly and increasingly more popular and harder to find, and that being said, obviously, it's going to be expensive, or than normal, so technically, this is a $20 bottle, okay, it's like 20 and 22 out of the distillery, okay, in the Facebook groups I'm in and stuff for whiskey, I've seen some people posting pictures as low as $16 for the bottle. And the one time I was able to find it before I got this bottle, they wanted $40 for the bottle. Okay, and that was here in Virginia where it's supposed to be like regulated pricing, so you're not supposed to have anything outrageous, and that's absolutely nuts. I ended up paying $35 for this bottle right here. Um... I just kind of at the point where I was like, you know what, whatever. I want a bottle of it. I've had it a couple times before, like, you know, found it at a restaurant, my buddy had a bottle. Um, so I, I didn't know I was buying, I wasn't really buying the hype, but I really just wanted my own bottle to have. Because um, it was like the first, one of the first whiskeys I've ever sought after. Um, before I tried it, it was one that I really, was really searching for to have my own bottle. Um, at the beginning of my whiskey experience, so it's kind of just like, cool to me to have a bottle of it because I've been looking for it. Um, even though I've already tried it, I just still wanted to have a bottle for it myself. It is 45% alcohol coming in at 90 proof, so, you know, a little bit higher than uh, your typical of between 30 and 40, but nothing crazy, not too bad. I believe they're the same as the Eagle Rare. Now, looking through the tasting notes on this, they were a little different, a little abnormal. But let's see what exactly they are. So, on the nose, the aroma is vanilla, mint, and molasses. So it should be pretty sweet. It's kind of weird mint. Like, I haven't ever heard of another whiskey smelling like mint. But it should be a pretty sweet nose. And uh, on the palate here, again, it's supposed to be a fairly sweet whiskey. So we should have some brown sugar and some spice that give way, this is directly from the buffalotrace.com, I'll read to you, it's funny how they put it. Pleasant sweet to the, pleasantly sweet to the taste with notes of brown sugar and spice that give way to toffee, dark fruit, and anise. Uh, I thought it was funny how they said, and give way, you know. Um, the anise, 99% sure are those little star shaped deals, you see, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands, I can't make a star obviously, but I'm pretty sure that's what anise is. Um, for those of you who don't know. But I could be wrong, so go ahead and Google that just to be sure. And the finish on this whiskey should be long and smooth with deep depths. But obviously there's only one way to figure out if it is uh, living up to those tasting notes. And if you haven't had it yet, does it live up to the hype? And is it worth buying a bottle for what's inside? Now this is one of those things... I'm a preference this by saying this is a very region dependent bottle, okay? Here in Virginia, back home in Florida, um, at least, you know, North Florida in my area, I haven't really been able to find it at the liquor store. You know, a couple restaurants might have it, but it's very hard to find at the liquor store. Along with, I know a lot of other people saying the same thing in their perspective states that it's incredibly hard to find. However, I've heard from some of my buddies that if you go out west, um, it gets increasingly easier to find. <coughs> Excuse me. If you go out west, up north, northwest, it's kind of easier to find there. And then, you know, in Kentucky and Tennessee, it's supposed to be not too difficult. However, in a lot of... Man, this foil is really giving me a hard time. And I'm not happy with it. Go over there. 
Okay. So, but yeah, here it's pretty hard to find. So if it's really easy to find by you, then congratulations, you got lucky. But if you can't find it, you've been looking for it, watch this before you buy it so that, uh, you know, is it worth it? It is a cork, so that's obviously a bonus. Let's go ahead and pour this up. And our nifty little bullet glass. Oh, yeah. Good and great. There we are. Put her back up on the shelf. It's a pretty neat bottle. It really is. I kind of like it. See if we smell that vanilla, mint, and molasses. I don't smell any mint, but I do smell vanilla and molasses. It definitely smells sweet. Mmm. I feel like I almost picked up on mint. Not quite though. I feel like I, I I can tell the mint's probably there. I can pick up on something seemingly like fresh and leafy or whatever, but I can't quite say I can smell mint. But to the uh, trained nose, it's it's probably there. Let's give it a shot. A pretty solid burn to it. A, a lot like the Eagle Rare on that aspect where it's powerful but it's not overdoing it and it goes away fairly fast so that the uh, flavors and the complexity or the really so the whiskey can speak for itself. Okay, it, the burn's there, let you know about it, kind of goes away. It lingers a little but not too much and then it lets the whiskey speak for itself, lets the flavors talk. But what flavors are talking, and what are they saying? Definitely some oak. I get the brown sugar, there's, a, there's some solid sweetness in there. Maybe what was it? Anise? Anise? Yeah, maybe a little Anise. I'm not quite sure what that would taste like. But I, de I definitely get some, a little spice in there. You know, there's definitely something a little spicy in there. Um, not, not spicy, but spice. You know, there's some spice. Um, definitely get some of that brown sugar, like I said. That oak. Uh, it, it's not bad. It really isn't too bad. It is a $20, $25 bottle. You know, maybe $30, but not really. Probably $20, $25 bottle. It is good, but it's nothing abnormally above... Jack Daniels or Jim Beam or another $20 bottle. It's, I mean, Jack Daniels is good, but there's a reason it's $20. So it's good, but it's not great. Kind of same with this. It's good, but it's not great. But let's go ahead and put on some ice, see what it don't do, and we'll get back to you. Cold buffaloes now, all right? Buffalo Trace on ice, see if anything's changed. Well, that's not very good at all. Um, it hasn't even been on ice on that, for that long. Bites completely gone, not even a hint of it ever being there. Sweetness nicks it, all right? Gone. Ain't no sweet, no mo. All right, it's all spice. It almost tastes like a rye at this point. Um, Very, very weird. Um, uh, It doesn't taste like a rye. I shouldn't say that, because rye has other things. This really is just straight spice. It's like liquid spice. I don't know what happened. But do not. And I'll say this again for emphasis. 
Do not. Okay? Put Buffalo Trace on ice. It just... There ain't nothing to it no more. But liquid spicy. Ain't nobody wants liquid spicy. Gosh. I'm real bummed I put so much on ice. That's so unfortunate. Neat, it really is a quality whiskey. It's nothing incredible, but it's quality. But man, put on some ice and whew. It's almost like you dumped something else out the bottle. For scoring purposes, six and a half. Neat, because like I said, it is good. No, scratch that. We'll go seven neat, because it is good. It really is. But it's just nothing amazing. You know, but it is good. So seven neat. Nope, I jacked up my scoring. Because I do five and five. Three point three neat. 3.5 neat. 3.5 neat. Um, because the whole explanation before. And then like 1.5 on ice. Like it's not the worst thing ever, but it's not really that good either. So that's going to bring us to a total of a 5 out of 10. Um, with it being on ice, it really tanked the score. It really did, because Neat is so much better. Neat is so much better. Neat really is a quality whiskey. But sipping on ice, it just tanked the score. And we rate it both ways here on the Sully Science channel. Um, yeah, what can I say, man? If, it, if this is something you've been wanting to try forever, try it. Okay? Because I don't think you're going to be mad about it. Don't overpay for it. Don't go paying nothing more than 35 40 bucks if you've been searching for it for a long, long time. Okay, like if this is one of your unicorn bottles, sure, pay the 40 bucks if it makes you happy. Don't go paying more than that. Um, You know, if you've been looking for it for a crazy long time, try it, man. You won't be disappointed. It'll be worth it worth the curiosity getting out of you, you know? But if it's something you can regularly find and you haven't tried it yet, I mean, if you want to, you can. You know, I mean, it's, it's not bad. I think you'll be happy with it, but, you know, Maker's Mark is better. Jameson's obviously better. Eagle Rare's, I mean, there's definitely a bunch of stuff better. Um, but for the price, you know, if, if you can find it easy for a $20 bottle, might as well pick yourself up some. But... It's up to you, ultimately. I'm not a financial advisor. But that's it for the Sully Show this week. Keep tuning in. Been kind of slow posting. A lot going on in life right now. Trying to get better about it. Keep tuning in. Like, subscribe, comment. Go follow me on Instagram. The link is down in the description below. And uh, thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Cheers.